Welcome back. Hope your legs are stretched, coffee made, and you're ready for our next great session because you are in for a treat. Joining us is Senior Regional Director, Head of Asia Pacific for American Express Meetings and Events, Patrick Rush. Bringing together insights from hundreds of meetings professionals globally, Patrick is going to share the key trends shaping the meetings and events industry in 2021 and offer recommended actions to help you create compelling and engaging meetings and events safely. And after Patrick will join me to answer some questions, answer your questions, so make sure that you get those into us. You know how. Okay, over to you, Patrick. Thanks, Andy, and welcome everyone to IBTM TV. It's a pleasure to be supporting IBTM World today during the virtual event. As mentioned, I'm Patrick Roche, and I'm delighted to introduce my colleagues, Milton Rivera and Linda McNary, who'll be presenting the 2021 Global Meetings and Events Forecast. This is the 10th year that we've delivered the forecast and it certainly has become a key source of information across the industry. Please do use the text box to send in any questions you may have as there will be Q&A at the end of this session. So now let's take a look at what's inside. So within the forecast, you'll find both global and regional meeting activity, characteristics, budgets and costs. You'll also find expectations for destination selection choices, site selection criterion, meeting approval process, technology, and other general meeting related patterns. And then finally, you'll find the top 15 data tables in the appendix for those of you who love data. So looking at the methodology. So to create the forecast, our team utilizes three different research elements. We survey the American Express meetings and events team, including our partners, market leads, and group air experts. We survey hotel and air partners, and we survey planners and buyers globally through an external database of qualified meeting professionals. And this year we had over 560 respondents globally. We then interviewed key experts across all markets and supplier types to get their insight. So before I hand over to Linda and to Milton, I'll step everyone through the key macro trends for 2021. So the 2021 forecast shines a light on how the meetings and events industry will adapt in the year following the disruptions of COVID-19. After the initial shock of global shutdowns and the ensuing wave of postponements and cancellations, the meetings and events industry appears to be adjusting. So looking at the three trends, so meetings have to happen. The absence of in-person meetings has solidified their critical role to drive business forward. Necessity drives adoption of virtual and hybrid delivery formats, as we've all seen throughout the course of this year. And we therefore anticipate hybrid formats to be a catalyst for a full return to in-person events. There is still a demand for travel, but the lack of consistency in government travel policies, procedures and protocols are impacting international travel for both transient and meeting and events travelers. The second macro trend focuses on the planners rise to the challenge, essentially. So the circumstances of this environment firmly establish the value of professional meeting planners, yet this role is not getting any easier. Our discussion today will expand on specific focus areas that highlight the value of the meeting planner. And then the third macro trend is around meeting management policies becoming even more robust worldwide. So whether it's duty of care, sustainability or other factors, the responses we received confirm that organisations throughout the globe are recognising that thorough meeting policies are necessary. There is also an increasing level of awareness that policies need to evolve to reflect the current environment and its meeting trends. And with that, I'm now going to hand over to Linda and Milton. So let's jump into our first macro trend, and that is, and I think this is near and dear to everyone's heart, meetings have to happen. Um, it's not, however, the paradigm has shifted from not, are we going to have a meeting or are we not going to have a meeting? It's how will we have that meeting? What does the format look like? And I know you, you spend a lot of time thinking and talking about that. Yeah, the, uh, 
Yeah, it's interesting the way it's transpired, but it didn't take very long for all of us to know and our customers to know that meetings uh, need to happen and uh, they likely will happen in a different way, which we'll talk about some of those uh, some of those inputs from the survey. Great. So let's jump into a few of the categories and I'll start off by talking about meeting type. No surprise. We've been um, predicting this in all of our conversations internally and hearing it from our customers and in our dialogue with the industry. Small and simple meetings are, are going to be the return to meetings, right? Because um, just because of protocols and the influences of the current environment, um, the data supports the fact that small and simple meetings um, will be the predominant type. And interestingly, and I don't know if you have any comments on this, Milton, but we also heard that internal meetings are going to be more common. I know you lead global sales, so um, what's, I was a little bit surprised that perhaps customer meetings are not closer to the top of the list. How would you comment on that? Well, there, there is pent up demand on internal meetings. It's been a while. If you think about any organization and the messages they want to get to the employees or a sales team for that matter, to motivate them to get out and uh, sell their products and grow the business. So there is a pent up demand that will spill over into 2021 for sure. Now meeting spend, the, I was fascinated by what we found here. Um, overall, globally, we heard that budgets are expected to decrease, but only little under 4%, 3.7%. Um, but when you break down that data, it was really, really interesting. Um, and I want to walk you through that. So 56% of respondents predicted a decrease, right? 10% expected budgets to stay flat in 2021. And 25%, most, mostly in Asia Pacific and Central and South America, predicted an increase. So when you blend all that together, it came out to a 3.7% in terms of budgets expected to decrease. Any comments on that? No, it, it, it uh, mirrors what I've seen and you know what my teams have seen out there with regards to the increase in the different, uh, in the different regions. Uh, it's interesting because it does lead into you know, how will those meetings and those budgets be spent and what type of delivery format uh, and it was it was interesting, but not surprising to see that most survey respondents expected uh, in-person meetings to uh, to materialize, you know, during the first half of 2021. Uh, the in-person meetings does have a different twist to it uh, in 2021. In-person meeting is a hybrid meeting, right? There's still people being uh, you know, being gathered in person. However, it is wrapped around a meeting such as this, uh, virtual and technology. And, and there'll undoubtedly be some regions that will come out of the virtual uh, uh, component uh, sooner than others. Uh, and much of this is predicated on government uh, regulations and travel quarantine restrictions. Uh, what we've seen is that there is demand to meet uh, but we have to abide by the government uh, restrictions. In the meantime, the meeting professionals, great meeting professionals that are in this industry are moving forward and embracing new opportunities and challenges of hybrid and how to engage attendees in a virtual way like we've never done before. Um, we one of one of the stats in the survey show the meeting professionals anticipate the 26% of the 2021 meetings will be in a hybrid format. And that is uh, much higher than it's ever been in the past. Definitely, and you're creeping into our second macro trend. But before we go there, um, let's talk about delivery format. So um, we say it once, we say it a million times, the rise of hybrid format. Um, respondents expect 26% of their events to have both in-person and virtual attendees. That one felt a little bit low to me, um, especially given everything that we're talking about. Um, I think it speaks to some, maybe some of the uncertainty that we're all, tr listen, we're all trying to figure this out, right? And at any point in time, um, opinions are changing based on the fluid nature of our current environment. Wouldn't you agree? Indeed, indeed. Um, and it is very fluid. And, and as, uh, as it was mentioned in the survey, different regions, different countries, will leapfrog and come out of this uh, sooner than others, depending on the situation and uh, in the particular geographic location. And the last area that was covered um, that we wanted to highlight is around space availability. So everyone was very optimistic that space will be available in 2021 based on um, the rebound from, from everything that we're going through in this current environment. However, there was some commentary that says that maybe in 2022, 
there may be some constriction of that availability due partially to the fact that there may be, because of the economic impact, there may be some closures, some bankruptcies um, that could impact that space. Also another factor, as meeting planners are adapting to the requirements to ensure that you have physical distancing and safety precautions for everyone involved, what previously, the ballroom that could have previously accommodated 100 people, at this point in time, you may only put 50 people in there to ensure that you've got that proper safety and distancing between people. So I think that all makes a lot of sense, and everyone's adapting as quickly as they can to these environments. Indeed, uh, Linda, the, the, that last point around needing double the space at least to accommodate the same meeting will put uh, some capacity constraints on, on different hotels. The, and, and venues. The, the other thing we'll see is uh, if all of that availability that existed uh, this time last year will be in place. There are many hotels that are choosing this time to renovate and close down and do other yeah. things. So with, uh, keeping in a close eye on space and availability, there's quite a few dynamics to uh, to incorporate into that. So let's move on and talk about our next macro trend, and I think this is near and dear to our hearts, and that is the 2021 opportunity, the supercharged meeting planner. And you started touching on that, Milton, but you know, never has the meeting planner's job been easy. You have to keep track of every detail, think through all the logistics of everything, communicate, 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 understand how to incorporate technology, and do all of that with a smile on your face and no anxiety showing, no furrowed brows, um, which was never easy. But now this has really supercharged um, the need to understand all those things and um, really adapt to the new environment and continue to adapt as it continues to shape and change and move going forward. So I love the comment on this slide about the chief communication officer. I know one of the things that we really spend time thinking about as people return to face-to-face -face meetings, we need to be conscious of giving people the information to understand. They may not have gone to a face-to-face -face meeting and they've heard all kinds of hype and heard different things, but you need to give them factual information that gives them comfort to understand what the experience might be. Additionally, there's so many new technology influences and I know I talk about technology a lot, Milton, but I know this is a, a passion of yours right now, so I don't know if you want to add any comments on that. Yeah, from a technology standpoint, we're not only talking about technology, we're talking about technology that has not in this fashion been introduced to meetings and events uh, because it's technology that's directly linked to the engagement of the attendee uh, because we're used, the, the planner now has to figure out a way on how to use more technology to increase the engagement of all these personas that we've talked about in in, uh, in previous forecasts, and uh, it it is quite the challenge and uh, quite the, the level of creativity. You're just adding another ingredient to the to the recipe. Yep. I think a key takeaway for all of this is for the planners to spend even more time in thinking through the why of the meeting. What are your desired outcomes? How do you make sure that you communicate, that you intentionally design every element of that program or meeting or event or whatever you're planning to make sure that you're delivering success against the objectives? All right, let's move to our third macro trend. And I'm going to let you kick this one off. Very good, yes. Be a, a tech, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I, was, I was just making a comment, an added comment on the, the technology piece that uh, we didn't mention that did come out in the forecast, and that is the technology, being a technology ambassador. Uh, and, and I wanted to call that out because, you know, technology in many cases could be intimidating. And, you know, what we've seen from, from meeting planners in the survey and otherwise is that supercharged meeting planner rising to the, to the occasion and embracing being an, an ambassador to the technology because not only do they have to internalize it, but they actually have to bring their customer along in the journey. So I just wanted to make that, uh, that, last, that last comment. But uh, so the, the, the last macro uh, challenge is an interesting one because it comes as a silver lining to this period of disruption. Com customer, uh, customers and companies are now taking a much closer look at meetings, management, policies, within their travel policy. And, and it isn't like companies didn't have uh, a component part of meetings in their policy. It generally wasn't very comprehensive. But um, this year's situation has provided a sense of urgency to revisit 
you know, those policies, which, which frankly, you know, is a bit overdue. Uh, organizations that are now looking to account for their employees on the meeting side, like they have on the travel side, uh, regardless of whether it's a small meeting, a large meeting, a hybrid meeting, or, or, or what have you. Uh, there's also greater focus on um, protecting employees, no, no surprise there. So all of this has sort of flourished from, uh, from what you know, everyone is working through in, uh, in 2020. And it, it is, again, one of those silver linings. Some of the, some of the, the data that comes from the, service, uh, the survey is globally 60% of the respondents said that the meetings and events policy contained explicit language around safety and security. Uh, even in the midst of the global, current global situation, um, things like climate change remains very important. And, and watch out for climate change and sustainability because that is another uh, silver lining that will continue to grow out of what has transpired uh, this year. And globally, 79% of the respondents reported that their organization emphasizes sustainability in, in, in meetings and events. And there's a few ways that you know those are articulated. The top three ways are uh, avoid uh, disposable items. So 64% of the surveys uh, uh, talk about that being included. 58% around recycling, and 49% chose uh, chose organic and local food and beverage options. Uh, with the except with the explosion of hybrid again on, on the same line of sustainability with the explosion of hybrid and virtual this by its very sense uh, impacts sustainability uh, by re re reducing the amount of carbon footprint due to large proportions of attendees that would normally travel door to door uh, are now choosing other methods methods to attend the meeting so uh, again, the sustainability piece is, is something to watch out for. Yeah, I think what's interesting to me, um, two things about this, and you, you covered all that so well, Melton. Um, one is, as you say, we used to talk to customers about you need to update your meetings policy. Do you have your meetings policy where it needs to be? And we, it felt like we had to kind of chase that topic, and suddenly it flipped, right? The, the tables turned, and customers are coming to us saying, we, we realize we need to update our policy. We need your help, and how do we go about this? So um, it, it's an interesting, you know, this, this year has brought so many changes where what was the norm went 180 degrees in like two days, right? And this is another one of those areas, I think. The other thing, and we'll dig into it more when we talk about the regions, but the data around meetings policy and how it's impacted in different parts of the world. So. We've covered off our three macro trends. Shall we jump into the data a little bit deeper on in some specific areas, um, starting off with Group Air? Yeah. So Group Air is in, in, an area we we think it's worth mentioning. It's a it's a huge component part of of, of meetings and events. Uh, it is you know and it is o always been at least a thirty percent of the cost or investment of a meeting. And uh, so we dug into the expectations for group air costs in 2021. Uh, and they vary substantially because of uh, a little bit of the unknown as to how the air travel component that is very much governed by, by government restrictions, how that would impact. But with that, 32% of respondents uh, predicted an increase in rates. Uh, and then 32% predicted uh, decrease, right? So um, it just sort of speaks to sort of uh, the uncertainty here with with where air is going, and there's so many variables. There's uh, there's capacity on airlines. There's routes that, um, that that have ceased to exist that may or may not come back between certain cities. So there's a lot to consider. Um, and, and you know the remaining percentage of here, but just basically just hold it like it is. They responded that they really just don't know what to expect, right? Which is, uh, which is honestly, I think, where this sort of category fits. Um, you know, when asked, the, when the survey, uh, folks who took the survey were asked, what is the most value in their group air provider? Respondents selected crisis management and favorable cancellation penalty. So, um, and again, no surprise here. These are the things that as, you know, group air ramps up or it settles down, these are the things that are going to help 
uh, meeting planners and all of us in the meetings industry managers. Um, because this this here, these two categories have always been there for group A, but this is the highest it's been in, uh, in previous years of serving. Uh, also, and not surprising at all, uh, overwhelmingly stated was the need for aircraft cleaning protocols and social distancing of passengers, right? So most of the airlines have settled into uh, their space in this, but there's sort of more to come when capacity starts to increase on these two components being, uh, being managed very closely. So again, we wanted to highlight Group Air because of its importance. And not only its importance from a standpoint of uh, spend within the meetings end-to-end -end standpoint, but its importance going forward and all of the uh, elements that, uh, that are going to impact it uh, going forward. So now let's take a quick look at the regional sections within the forecast and starting with Europe. So respondents expect in-person events to make up about half of their 2021 events lineup. They're predicting an increase in hybrid events in 21 and a decrease in virtual only as they plan for the return of in-person events. Now, despite predicted restrictions and uncertainties, most respondents rated their level of optimism regarding the health of the meetings and events industry somewhere in the middle. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 12% of the respondents were very optimistic. They rated the range from 8 to 10. 72% of respondents were in the middle, so their rating ranged from 4 to 7, and only 15% were very discouraged with a rating of 1 to 3. Another key area to highlight is when looking at reducing your meeting budget, what area would you look to cut first? And as you can see, off-site optional activities, the number one answer by country was the UK, France and Spain. Uh, and then when we look at room drops, now, the number one answer by country was Germany, Belgium, Netherlands and Poland as key areas of where you can reduce your meeting and event budget for those particular countries. Now, let's move on to North America. So North American respondents estimated that almost one quarter, 23.6% of their events in 2021 will include a virtual component and will be smaller local events with fewer than 25 attendees. These events will also not require air travel or hotel rooms. They expect that 45% of their virtual hybrid meetings will be web conferences and 27% of all virtual hybrid meetings will make use of mobile apps. And then finally, the leading type of meeting in North America for 2021 is expected to be small and simple meetings in the US and internal team meetings and or training in Canada. 64% of the respondents in the region also noted that they're more likely to have explicit language in their meeting policies in relation to payment methods and processes. Now, North America, if your overall meetings and event budget uh, was to increase by 10% in 2021, where would you most prefer to use those funds and the respondents indicated in Canada that the number one response clearly at 56% was to improve on-site experience, uh, rated secondly by increasing the number of meetings. In the US, improve on-site experience also is a very prominent area of focus at 39%, uh, and then secondly, an increased use in technology rated at 27, as you can see here. So now let's move on to Central and South America. So the Central and South American respondents show great optimism. In fact, the highest amongst the region regarding the health of meetings and events industry in 2021. More than three quarters of the planners or 76% described the career options available to them as a meetings and events professional as excellent. For overall budgets in Central and South America, 41% of respondents anticipated that their organization's meeting spend for 2021 will increase, which was the highest of all regions surveyed. And then like the other regions surveyed, the most common types of meetings in Central and South America will be small and simple meetings and internal team meetings training. 
However, in the departure from the other regions, respondents predict a fairly flat number of meetings compared to last year. So finally, moving on to the last region being Asia Pacific. So Asia Pacific, there is positive sentiment around the remainder of 2020 and moving strongly into 2021. Respondents in China and Hong Kong expect to see an increase across the board of every type of meeting. Additionally, four in 10 meetings and events planners in Asia Pacific or 43% expect to see an increase in client customer advisory board meetings and nearly half or 49% anticipate that there will be an increase in internal team meetings in 2021. Finally, in Asia Pacific, formal adoption of meetings policy lags behind the other regions in most, most categories, with only one third stating that the organization has robust adoption. To download a full a copy of the 2021 Global Meetings and Events Forecast, please visit the website as you can see here on the screen. And now let's move to Q&A. Thank you, Patrick, for helping us understand that wealth of information. But I'm sure that's got our audience wanting to know more. So let's take a few questions. Hi, Patrick, how are well, you doing? I'm very well, thank you, and good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too. Okay, so our first question is from Maximilian. Uh, he asks, in the future, companies will be rated by their positive efforts on minimizing climate change. Where do you see Amex now and in 10 years time? So maybe he's also inspired by the talk that we had before as well about sustainability. Certainly, and as you would have heard throughout the forecast, actually sustainability is one of the key areas of focus for, for organizations across the world. Um, uh, if we reflect historically back, sustainability wasn't top of the list. Uh, now it certainly isn't. I believe I think the statistic was around 79% uh, of organisations considering that, that, this, that this is a critical factor. For our own organisation, we're committed, of course, to this, and we encourage and empower our customers to join us with this journey. Uh, as an industry, what's interesting is we're now being challenged around how can we not only build it into at the, at the meeting level, that is, of course, sustainability, but how do we effectively report on that? so that, that organizations can use that information to demonstrate their commitment, their output, their achievements. Is it something that, that you guys have to, well. is that something you guys have to do with kind of goals and targets and things like that? Certainly, from a, for a customer that has a strategic meetings management program, you know, they're going to want to incorporate, in fact, they do today incorporate sustainability objectives within their plan. So across the industry, you know, we, we have to work together and collaborate, not just for agencies, but also for all the partners that join us in this journey, the airlines, the hotels, the venues, etc. How do we ensure that the goals are shared collectively and we're collecting enough data back to report back out on that? And as I said, that, that's going to be an ongoing challenge for the industry as this continues, of course, to evolve. And, you know, I think organisations will start to look at using technology specifically around the reporting of the mechanisms here. Um, and also because of the pandemic, obviously, it, may, it just makes it so difficult to look into the future. It just creates so much uncertainty. How easy is it for you to sort of look into like 2021 and beyond that to, to how the business is going to, how it's going to be? That's a great question because, of course, we, we all would love to have a crystal ball. Uh, and in fact, I, I think, I think a good uh, example of this is no one could have predicted what's, of course, transpired in 2020. So, you know, when we do look ahead, uh, of course, there will be things that we will account, encounter across the journey uh, that will take us, for, you, know, out of, you know, from surprise, out of left field, as they say. Uh, that said, you know, obviously what we can do as business partners from, from an industry standpoint and with our customers is ensure that the programs that we put in place today are flexible, they're robust, so that should we have any or encounter any challenges down the track, that we can work together, collaborate and overcome those. And actually, we've seen that this year. This year has been you know, critically important for everyone to come together and work as a unit, uh, a cohesive team. Uh, and we're now, now that we're seeing the return to meetings in many markets, countries around the world, I should say, um, you know, that, that success is, is completely hinged on uh, everyone's commitment um, to, to, of course, work together. 
Fantastic. All right, we've got uh, time for another question. Um, so from your research, when do you anticipate a level of normal normality? Great question also. In fact, everyone, I think everyone that we speak to at the moment, is, uh, you know, is asking the, this magic question. Yeah. When, you know, when will meetings return? What's interesting is we're already seeing a move uh, from virtual to hybrid. So that, that absolutely is a clear indicator that face-to-face -face meetings are coming back. So that's something for us all to celebrate. The, the second piece around this is that there is a strong indication that uh, the second half of 2021 is when we will see a significant return uh, to meetings. And that's where, where things will really ramp up. Uh, but again, we're keeping our finger on the pulse here. We're in discussions with our partners, that's the industry partners, clients, et cetera, to make sure that we continue to monitor uh, the return of meetings effectively. Fantastic. Well, I like the fact that, you know, businesses are going to have to work together to get through this so that everyone can thrive. That's a really positive takeaway. Thank you, Patrick. That was a great Q&A. Thank you for answering all those questions. And I'm now joined by Sam Allen, who is a virtual conference MC, meeting designer and TV presenter, who will be steering you through the remainder of today's session. Sam, it's great to see you. It's great to see you. How has the day been so far? It has been fascinating. I've learned a lot. Um, I really, uh, you know, what thematically what I've heard throughout the day is as I was saying to Patrick that business is going to have to have to work together it feels like I've heard three descriptions of normal the new normal yeah. the next normal and a different normal but it's going to be it's going to have to change I think that's the big takeaway is things can't go back to where they were it's not in our interest to do that so that's been you know it's been really interesting to hear it from this sector and a nice early start for you here in the UK. Uh, I love that. Seven o'clock. <laughs> it's, it's when I'm at my best. <laughs> and what are you looking forward to uh, seeing for the rest of the day? Well, I'm here with you now for the next, I think, eight hours, nine hours. Uh, we have so much so much so we've got the crowning of the tech watch champion i'm excited about that being a techie virtual mc as everyone who knows me out there will know looking forward to seeing the panel discussions we've got an ethical hacker who knew there was an ethical hacker until ibtm tv but I have snuck in here. I've snuck in a little bit earlier, folks, because uh, you weren't expecting me this early, but I am really, really, really excited about our next keynote speaker. You know why. The audience will know why after. So that's why I've come in a little bit earlier. Can't wait to meet her. Awesome. I love a bit of fangirling. That's excellent. <laughs> well, look, it's time for another break. Recharge. Check those emails. I know you haven't been peeking at them during the sessions. Get some fresh air. You know, step away from your screen and be sure to be back with us in a few minutes uh, when we have, as Sam was alluding to, our incredible keynote speaker, the social technologist and futurist Cecilia Tam, who will be discussing how technology will transform the way we gather in the next year and beyond is not to be missed. So be back in a few here on IBTM TV.